Hello um, and welcome to another Pill of Knowledge within the Tourism Foro project, uh, this time focusing on environmental and social sustainability of tourism and the role uh, digitalization uh, can play here. Now, environmental and social sustainability and digitalization are undoubtedly uh, key shifts shaping our world today. Digital technologies have been reshaping our lives, the way we communicate, learn, meet, shop, or have fun for the past 30 years or so, and they will undoubtedly continue to do so in yet unimaginable ways in the future. At the same time, uh, we're experiencing today unprecedented environmental crisis with pollution, loss of biodiversity, and climate change, no longer being something happening out there somewhere, but affecting each one of us personally, bringing sustainability to the forefront in our own lives. The tourism industry, as one of the world's largest economic sectors, is no innocent here, itself being responsible for significant environmental and social degradation worldwide. So where do we stand today? Is the tourism sector attempting to come to grips with environmental and social sustainability issues? And if so, how? Particularly in relation to small and medium tourism enterprises. And what is the role digitalization can play? So hello once again, my name is Neda Telishman Koshuta and having worked in tourism development for my entire professional life here in Croatia, first at the Institute for Tourism, and now in my own small company dedicated specifically to sustainable tourism and hospitality solutions, uh, these topics are of great interest and of great concern for me. And I'm really, really glad to have the opportunity to participate in this uh, Tourism Foro project on behalf of one of the Croatian project partners, the Association of Employers in Croatian Hospitality, and to explore these issues with you today in this brief pill of knowledge with uh, a longer webinar scheduled for the beginning of September, giving us an opportunity to discuss these issues at greater length in the, in the near future. So uh, as this uh, summer tourism season of 2023 is in full swing by now, uh, we're witnessing an almost complete, if not complete, recovery from COVID-19 across Europe. In Croatia, a record season is forecast with more arrivals foreseen this summer than in the pre-pandemic 2019, which was a record year for us to date. It seems as if everything is back to normal, but what is normal for tourism and particularly the hospitality sector? Continuing growth has been normal. Over the past 50 years, the volume of tourists and tourism receipts have been continually increasing worldwide, bringing economic prosperity and well-being to numerous places across the globe. The economic well-being has, however, as is well known by now, come at a cost, cost borne by the environment and the social fabric of local communities, as seen in Barcelona, in Venice, Dubrovnik, Prague, Amsterdam, as well as in many, many more less, less known tourism destinations. What we're seeing as results of over-tourism is that crowds of tourists and tourism-related traffic are becoming a major irritation factor for the local population. The tourism-driven building booms are disfiguring the landscape. That local people and local lifestyle are being displaced by facilities and services for tourists. And research is showing that local communities are feeling place identity is being lost, with many historic town centers simply becoming stages for tourists, devoid of any real community life. Not to mention the fact that the hospitality sector is a sig significant contributor to food waste, for example. Now, data vary here, but some figures set this food waste at 1.6 billion tons of thrown away food uh, by the hospitality industry per year. Hotels are also among the highest water and energy consumers, using up to 1,500 liters of water per room per day. And yes, the travel industry contributes significantly to global warming, being responsible for approximately 8% of carbon emissions, mostly coming from uh, transportation. 
but there is change. There is definitely a shift towards sustainability and the tourism industry is a part of that shift. Now, focusing just for a minute on the broader picture, this shift receiving an additional push from the global COVID experience is being driven by an undeniable uh, global environmental crisis by post-materialist social values, especially among the environmentally and socially conscious younger generations, the millennials and the Z generation. And finally, by the political will for change, as seen, for example, in uh, European Commission's European Green Deal, which is truly a transformational plan for restructuring Europe, Europe's economy, uh, in alignment with green industries and achieving a climate neutral Europe by 2050, but also providing a legal and financial framework, the latter amounting to a budget of a trillion euro. Uh, we are seeing as a reflection of all of that, uh, that there is a general shift in changing of guests' expectations. According to uh, Booking.com's uh, 2022 Sustainable Travel Report, almost three quarters of their respondents, that is of prospective travelers or tourists, want to travel more uh, sustainably. And their share is growing rapidly by 10% since the year before. More than uh, three quarters intend to choose a sustainable accommodation when traveling this year. Three quarters want to use environmentally friendly transportation in destinations, such as public transportation, bicycles, or simply walk. Actually, 30% express shame in flying because of high aviation carbon footprint. Over a half of the respondents are willing to adjust their travel plans so as to avoid crowds and not to be part of over-tourism. Other research by, uh, for example, Euromonitor or The Economist magazine shows that most tourists believe uh, accommodation and transportation providers are also responsible for environmental protection, or in other words, that they should use renewable energy sources, measure their carbon footprint, and that they should be involved in carbon offsetting schemes. Uh, in response to all that, uh, we are seeing the greening of the tourism industry. The tourism sector participated for the first time ever at the UN Conference on Climate in 2021, where the sector produced a declaration committing to net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Also in an attempt to unite numerous organizations engaged in sustainability of tourism, the Future of Tourism Coalition was formed, comprised of civil society, public bodies, and private sector companies committed to sustainable tourism development. Furthermore, we have today uh, international criteria and indicators the uh, uh, Global Sustainable Tourism Council or the GSTC criteria and indicators, which are applicable throughout the world, determining the minimum a tourism business or a destination should reach in terms of uh, sustainable operations. So this is actually a mechanism for measuring uh, sustainability. The GSTC criteria are available for hotels, for tour operators, and for destinations. They cover four areas, uh, those being the man management of sustainability, and then economic, social, cultural, and environmental sustainability uh, of a community. Uh, presented on this slide are selected criteria for uh, sustainable hotel operations. And it is, of course, impossible to go through all the criteria and the accompanying uh, indicators in this short time. So just by way of example, allow me to highlight some of the themes or some of the measures that are included uh, in this system. Uh, so we have, for example, compliance with the zoning, but also assessment of the hotel's uh, impact on the landscape and the community. Uh, local purchasing, how much uh, is a hotel involved in purchasing of various goods and services, most particularly of food, uh, in the local community. Conservation of water and water energy, but also conservation of food. Uh, monitoring the carbon footprint per tourist night. 
then circular practices of recycling and reusing. Uh, what kind of compliances do they have for uh, good practices for tourists when visiting to natural uh, and cultural heritage sites, which may be particularly sensitive? So the GSTC framework is important because it is the basis for certification for sustainability, or in other words, respected certification bodies are basing their criteria on this broadly accepted baseline. If you're a small and medium enterprise in the accommodation sector, being aware of and understanding this framework will help you in deciding on your own sustainability activities and practices, but it will also help you recognize greenwashing schemes should you uh, come upon them or should you be exposed to them. Uh, let us let us see at this point uh, what hotel wo hotels worldwide are actually doing regarding sustainability. According to the uh, Green Lodging Trends Report, which follows green hotel practices, and it is based currently on data from 27,000 uh, uh, facilities worldwide, including small and medium hotels and also facilities from uh, larger chains, what we're seeing uh, for example, as far as the management of sustainability is concerned, we're seeing that 50% uh, of those hotels in the sample have allocated a budget and a responsible person for uh, sustainable practice. 25% are certified as sustainable by an independent uh, agency. Uh, when it comes to conservation of resources and the reduction of pollution, uh, we're seeing that measures to reduce food waste are implemented extensively. 90% uh, of those in the sample implement uh, such measures to, to control or counteract food waste. But on the other hand, less than half implement measures to reduce consumption of water and electricity such, for example, as uh, LED lights, window insulation, or high efficiency water fixtures. Also, less than half are dealing with uh, plastic packaging. Uh, only a quarter produce electricity from renewables uh, on their own premises, and even fewer, less than 13%, buy energy from other renewable, uh, from other producers of uh, renewable. Uh, energy. Uh, thus, based on these data, it could be said that hotels uh, are on their way uh, to implementing conservation activities, but with these below half percentages or below 50% figures, and quite a few of them, this seems to be still what we may call an emerging practice. And it seems to me there's still uh, quite a long way for us to go. Now, of course, digital digitalization uh, is and will be a crucial tool for driving social and, and environmental sustainability further. Some of the areas where there has been a lot of work and practical solutions are available, uh, and new ones being invented and perfected, including uh, those which are of interest to, uh, especially to small and medium accommodations, include, for example, the use of digital uh, document management systems to replace paper and printing. They also include uh, the use of uh, IoT technology, that is the Internet of Things technology, that is fitting everyday devices with internet connectivity and ability to exchange data in, in real time, uh, together, joining that together with artificial intelligence for uh, smart management systems, notably smart energy management, uh, controlling energy flows within hotels and optimizing for efficient uses of energy by heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and lighting systems, which are, of course, the, the, the energy guzzling systems within a hotel property. Or, for example, uh, producing smart water systems, which means not only managing water use, uh, 
managing for the most efficient water use, but also uh, purification and reuse of water of water uh, so that wastewater or, or gray water, as it's called, can be used for cooling or can be used, for example, for uh, watering of gardens uh, on uh, hotel properties. Or uh, also we have uh, management for food waste, that is smart food waste systems, uh, including databases of past use so that food needs can be more accurately forecast and that food can be more accurately uh, ordered. Also, there's software for tracking inventories that's readily available, as well as monitoring uh, what is thrown away in real time. All of these attempts to reduce that huge, huge and inexcusable food waste. Uh, digitalization also allows for collecting and analyzing big data sets in order to see past behavior, to uh, analyze typical behavior, and based on this intelligence, to better predict the needs for food, the needs for uh, energy, or the need for water supplies, uh, or how to, how to operate uh, a waste management system. All of this uh, undoubtedly greatly contributes to increased efficiency of these systems and in turn uh, contributes to reduction uh, of emissions, of carbon emissions. Moreover, digitalization plays uh, today also an irreplaceable role in innovation of so many other areas which also bear on sustainability of tourism. Notably, such areas are transportation, design, architecture, but this in itself uh, is a subject for another pill of knowledge and another uh, webinar. Uh, let me also point out at this time that digital technology is key in enabling inclusiveness of visitors with disabilities uh, to a level to an extent never seen before. And finally, let me mention another area of innovation, the creation of online tourism spaces with virtual reality. That is the creation of imaginary places and the possibility to participate and interact in them. What we're talking about is virtual travel while actually staying at home. Well, maybe that is the ultimate tool of environmental sustainability in tourism, in fact. Uh, all or all large international hotel chains have their uh, ESG programs. For example, Marriott has the Serve 360 program, Accor Planet 21, uh, Intercontinental Hotel Group, the Green Engage uh, program, and so forth. Uh, in Croatia, ESG programs are also present. Some notable examples coming from uh, medium-sized companies, namely, uh, for example, Valamar company, but also from some small individual hotels. Uh, all of these programs are committed to net zero by 2050, although their comprehensiveness, it must be said, uh, varies greatly at this point in time. At this point in time, uh, let me also start uh, bringing this pill of knowledge to a close. Uh, I hope I have given you a brief, but a consistent and informative uh, overview of the state of environment and social sustainability in tourism and particularly in the accommodation sector and the role digitalization uh, plays today and will play in the future although I'm sure I have missed uh, a great deal. Uh, but let me remind you that we do have a webinar coming up again in early September, and that that will be an opportunity to revisit some of these topics, uh, but also to, to go into further detail, especially about the best case examples. And also that will be an opportunity to discuss these issues uh, together. So uh, until September then, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye uh, for now and enjoy the remainder of the summer. <laughs>